homogeneous bodies differ to touch by these affections and differences, as we have said. They also differ in respect of their smell, taste, and color. By homogeneous bodies I mean, for instance, metals, gold, copper, silver, tin, iron, stone, and everything else of this kind and the bodies that are extracted from them. Also the substances found in animals and plants, for instance, flesh, bones, sinew, skin, viscera, hair, fibers, veins. These are the elements of which the non-homogeneous bodies like the face, a hand, a foot, and everything of that kind are made up. And in plants, wood, bark, leaves, roots, and the rest like them. The homogeneous bodies, it is true, are constituted by a different cause, but the matter of which they are composed is the dry and the moist, that is, water and earth, for these bodies exhibit those qualities most clearly. The agents are the hot and the cold, for they constitute and make concrete the homogeneous bodies out of earth and water as matter. Let us consider, then, which of the homogeneous bodies are made of earth and which of water and which of both. Of organized bodies, some are liquid, some soft, some hard. The soft and the hard are constituted by a process of solidification, as we have already explained. Those liquids that go off in vapor are made of water. Those that do not are either of the nature of earth, or a mixture either of earth and water, like milk, or of earth and air, like wood, or of water and air, like oil. Those liquids which are thickened by heat are a mixture. Wine is a liquid which raises a difficulty, for it is both liable to evaporation and it also thickens. For instance, new wine does. The reason is that the word wine is ambiguous and different wines behave in different ways. New wine is more earthy than old, and for this reason it is more apt to be thickened by heat and less apt to be concealed by cold. For it contains much heat and a great proportion of earth, as in Arcadia, where it is so dried up in its skins by the smoke that you scrape it to drink. If all wine has some sediment in it, then it will belong to earth or to water, according to the quantity of the sediment it possesses. The liquids that are thickened by cold are of the nature of earth. Those that are thickened either by heat or by cold consist of more than one element, like oil and honey, and sweet wine. Of solid bodies, those that have been solidified by cold are of water, for example, ice, snow, hail, hoarfrost. Those solidified by heat are of earth, for example, pottery, cheese, natron, salt. Some bodies are solidified by both heat and cold. Of this kind are those solidified by refrigeration, that is, by the privation both of heat and of the moisture which departs with the heat. For salt and the bodies that are purely of earth solidify by the privation of moisture only, ice by that of heat only, these bodies by that of both. So both the active qualities and both kinds of matter were involved in the process. Of these bodies, those from which all the moisture is gone are all of them of earth, like pottery or amber. For amber also, and the bodies called tears, are formed by refrigeration, like myrrh, frankincense, gum. Amber, too, appears to belong to this class of things. The animals enclosed in it show that it is formed by solidification. The heat is driven out of it by the cold of the river and causes the moisture to evaporate with it, as in the case of honey when it has been heated and is immersed in water. Some of these bodies cannot be melted or softened. For instance, amber and certain stones, for example, the stalactites in caves. For these stalactites, too, are formed in the same way. The agent is not fire, but cold which drives out the heat, which, as it leaves the body, draws out the moisture with it. In the other class of bodies, the agent is external fire. In those from which the moisture has not wholly gone, earth still preponderates, but they admit of softening by heat, for example, iron and horn. Now, since we must include among meltables those bodies which are melted by fire, these contain some water. Indeed, some of them, like wax, are common to earth and water alike. But those that are melted by water are of earth. Those that are not melted either by fire or water are of earth, or of earth and water. Since then, all bodies are either liquid or solid, and since the things that display the affections we have enumerated belong to these two classes and there is nothing intermediate, it follows that we have given a complete account of the criteria 
for distinguishing whether a body consists of earth or of water, or of more elements than one, and whether fire was the agent in its formation, or cold, or both. Gold, then, and silver and copper and tin and lead and glass and many nameless stone are of water, for they are all melted by heat. Of water, too, are some wines and urine and vinegar and lye and whey and serum, for they are all concealed by cold. In iron, horn, nails, bones, sinews, wood, hair, leaves, bark, earth preponderates. So, too, in amber, myrrh, frankincense, and all the substances called tears and stalactites and fruits, such as leguminous plants and corn. For things of this kind are, to a greater or less degree, of earth. For of all these bodies, some admit of softening by heat, the rest give off fumes and are formed by refrigeration. So again in natron, salt, and those kinds of stones that are not formed by refrigeration and cannot be melted. Blood, on the other hand, and semen, are made up of earth and water and air. If the blood contains fibers, earth preponderates in it. Consequently, it solidifies by refrigeration and is melted by liquids. If not, it is of water and therefore does not solidify. Semen solidifies by refrigeration, its moisture leaving it together with its heat.